You should look at the definition of bay by this. It means that we are looking at a contract here. How do you end a contract? A contract can be ended in four ways. One, by performance. If Abaribe, for example, Senator Enyaya Abaribe had brought Kanu to court. Two, a contract can be performed by agreement by all the parties that look, let us discharge this contract, let us no longer go on with it. Three, a contract can be performed through breach. That is, you have breached it because of that you have not performed or you have performed it through a breach, in which case the person who has suffered will get damages. And finally, and this is, the, this is more, uh, more crucial to our discourse or discussion this night, a contract can be frustrated, can be performed through frustration. In other words, due to no fault of either the parties or the court in this case, that contract of you taking Inam the canoe on bail and bringing him back for trial has been frustrated. What do I mean by this? Kanu was granted bail in August this year. He had been in detention since 2015. Over charges of terrorism and treasonable felony. The court was later to strike out about six of the charges bordering on terrorism, but retained those bordering on treasonable felony, which was why the judge advisedly said she would not overrule herself on the application by Kanu's lawyer to discharge her earlier order that the security agents who will testify will do so behind closed curtains. She said, I will not uh, rescind that decision because I still believe that treasonable charges are themselves serious enough in law. Now, there are two applicable doctrines here to guide the listening and the watching public that will help us navigate the legal terrain that appears to be crocodile infested. It's not that difficult. The first principle is what we call res ipsa loquitur. It means the thing, the act, speaks for itself. The second principle is the doctrine of last sin, last sin. Let us now take these two principles by themselves. First, rest in saluquito, the thing speaks for itself. It is common knowledge in this country, Okimbalo, is it not? That on the 11th of September, 2017, the army, the military, through the army, one of his wings, invaded the house of Nnamdi Kanu at Uhuhu in Umwahia, Abia State. We saw when the military operation was going on, everything was televised, it was live. And we saw when they penetrated the house, we saw that that was the last time Nigerians saw Nnamdi Kanu in his house. That's what we call the doctrine of last sin. After that, we have not seen Kano. And his parents or his father, his father also was said not to have been seen. And his family members were now saying, look, we have not seen our son. So going by the doctrine of last sin and the doctrine of res ipsa loquito, it means that the last time Nigerian saw Nnamdi Kano was when he was in his home in Umwahia, and the military invaded that home, and it has not been seen since then. The question then comes, can you tell Senator Abaribe to produce a person that he cannot lay hands on? Mm. God forbid, let us assume Namdi Kanu was kidnapped, and he's in kidnappers then. Can you call Abaribe and say you must produce Namdi Kanu, even though we are aware it's in the kidnappers' den. That is where Section 177 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act comes into play. This section says a shorty can go back to court and apply and say, Hello, sir, discharge me from my shortyship obligation. 
I can no longer carry this load. It is too heavy on me. I can no longer see the person that I stood short for. Because that person, after the invasion of his home, I have not seen him. I cannot lay my hands on him. Abaribe in law will be entitled to ask the court for such prayers. All right. Um, uh, senior advocate, we'll take a break. I still have Mr. Martin Zoloja, a senior journalist in Nigeria. Uh, when we return, we'll give you details of how this story has developed, plus more analysis. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back.